Well, this is not really an accurate description of my room, how it looked back in the days. In fact, for most of my childhood, I did not really have that much of a room to myself. In fact, I always shared room with my sister. However, one thing I can remember is the fact that um, my first game... Uh, that we had at home was Sonic the Hedgehog. And uh, it was actually kind of a family thing. It was not just that me as the guy was the only one playing. No, we, we actually had family sessions where me, my mom and my sister used to play Sonic the Hedgehog. And it was quite fun. So we're going to check the my game library here. Yeah, that is quite... Uh, not really as it uh, used to be, but um, in fact there are more games here than uh, there ever was. I think the most games we ever had for the Sega Mega Drive, as it was known in Europe, was uh, Sonic the Hedgehog and later on Echo the Dolphin. We never actually got Sonic 2 or Sonic 3 or any of them. Uh, but I still pride myself a bit on how I do with Sonic 2. So let's load that one into the console and Sega. see how I do. Now this is basically just a personal time challenge. There's nothing else to it, really. I'm just going to see how far I can get based on my memory of the game and... Well, not really my memory, but it's a bit of an unfamiliar controller as well, but... Well, I basically just wanted to play this and I wanted some company while playing it, so... I have, it just happened to have a day off today, so that means more free time than I know what to do with. And playing Sonic the Hedgehog is never actually a bad thing. Uh, but right now I'm basically just getting through most of it. And, of course, catching the ring, because getting the ring is vitally important. I've always hated this bonus stage, and I mean really hated. Not only because it's they are mandatory for completing the game, but also because they require basically an entirely different skill set than the the main game. So we gotta continue at least, but basically you need to be very careful how you maneuver in this stage and really have a good firm grasp on the controls so you can get the Chaos Emerald. God damn it! There we go. Like I said, I never liked them. And basically, the first one or two bonus stages are the only ones I've actually managed to handle. So, Green Hill Zone 2. Out of all the Green Hill Zone levels, this was never my favorite. Uh, number one is classic because um, I basically can run in my sleep at this point. And uh, number two is basically meh. It doesn't really have anything going for it. Uh, it's also one of the levels that you can actually complete quickest if you try for a time attack. I do not, however. I think my record on this level is an average of 29 seconds or something like that. Must be even quicker, actually. And uh, no bonus level for us this time. I've always fancied Green Hill Zone 3, and I think part of that is the fact that the, the boss is there. And I've always loved the boss music in Sonic the Hedgehog. I mean, it is just a stellar piece of video game music, and god damn it, why can't I just get the hell over there? So let's take the short way over. 
because I don't really have time to dilly-dally on that score. Also, it, you felt so fucking smart finding those little... Uh, those tiny... Uh, shortcuts. Ah, crap. One interesting thing was that uh, I had a friend who played a lot of Mario and only played Mario 1. And then he played Sonic the Hedgehog and was like, Oh, you can actually run backwards? I suppose you never got Sonic 3 and... Yeah, like I said, I'm a big fan of the boss music here. But the first boss is really easy. I mean, it, there's nothing else to it. I mean, you can even follow the pendulum if you want, but it's not going to be yet that much of a difference. But as I said, I'm actually playing this with an, a controller, an Xbox controller, to be precise. Uh, usually the change of controller sometimes can matter, but not in this case. I am familiar enough with the Xbox controller to do a decent job of it. Now, speaking of least favorable theme overall, Marble Zone takes the case. Now, I, I have nothing against the music. The music is terrific. I got that. It. But I have something against those fucking worms, the lava everywhere, and the fact that basically everything is so uneven that, um, yeah. You might also notice the fact that I played really, really worse coming to through this level. Ah, crap. I thought... And there's a lot of forced waiting, too. And I really mean that. Uh, forced waiting, as in, let's just sit here, wait, and do nothing, basically. So, come on now. Ah, grab. And that's actually one of my biggest gripes with the Marble Zone. How you just sit there and wait. Then again, there are some secrets worth exploring even on this level. So one of a life, meaning that we have more of them to spend on this level. Now I d don't actually think I will lose a life on Marble Zone, but it's highly possible. It's basically just my ego telling me that no, you don't get to lose a life on Marble Zone. In fact, I would prefer to not lose one until I reach Spring Yard. The only rule I have for this playthrough, which is very ad hoc, by the way, is that I'm not allowed to use the continue. I'm not supposed to use the continue. Ah. And once again, we go with how much I just hate these levels. Now, I was fortunate. I was very fortunate that I was right now bounced to the right place. And right now, I have also been bounced so I can provide an opening. An opening where I just get this done. And we got the Chaos Emerald. One less for Robotnik. Another thing that's really annoying about the Chaos Emeralds is you can't really miss many of them. Uh, you basically have... I think there's eight of them you need to get. And that means you need to get basically all of the bonus stages to get all of them. Of course, Robotnik will also be there in the... Oh, God, no. Robotnik will also be there in the end, teasing you. I don't know why, but for some reason I will always loved how the lava is just streaming down from the roof in that nonsensical regard. I mean... And this is even better. I mean, the lava there doesn't even start chasing you until... Ah, we lost the shield, but... Uh, the shield is meant to be expended. 
Then we have these fucking thing things. And I just got lucky there. Can't... There's no other word for it. And got unlucky with that unholy worm. Reinforcing our shields. Now, you can do it th this way as well. And grab the extra life and the extra coin. But then you basically have to do it all over again. Especially if you're like me and uh, sometimes get a bit careless. Yeah, I know you're impatient, Sonic, but there's nothing I can do about it. These pillars of fire are not meant to be... That, that's the thing, if you jump there, you will notice that you can't jump at the apex of the pillar. You have to jump while it's coming down, giving you even less time, really. Oh, god damn it! get up there. Oh, come on, this is just embarrassing now. Thank you. Going up. Oh, come off it. Would you stop that? Refilling our coin supplies. This is a this is a thing I've been doing ever since day one, and that means you don't just break one of them, you break all of them if you can. Now I was unable to break all of them, but oh, and here we have basically Sonic's lava jump to shark moment. You get get the stars, and instead of doing anything else to just run past everything. Oh, there's no secret entrance there, so... If I have to say music tunes that are a big nostalgia trigger for me, then basically Sonic the Hedgehog's theme, all of it. I mean, all of it. Uh, all of Sonic 1 is an instant nostalgia trigger for me. I don't feel there is any soundtrack in the game that's actually bad. Sorry, I just need to fix... Yeah, there we go. I had activated a s the surround system on my headphones, and keeping with the nostalgia, I felt that activating that would be a bad... Poor choice. I mean... Oh god, no, 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 god damn it. And there we go. Ah, crap. You need to curve into the ball, little man. And we have a precious little in terms of coins left. Oh, yeah, right. There's, there's a technique to this. There we go, and more coins, nice. Now the road I took is generally considered to be a shortcut, but why, I don't really know. Okay, so we got an achievement, 500 rings to rule them all, apparently since I last touch this, they actually added achievements to the entire thing. Which is kind of nice. I mean, achievements are not really the... Achievements are not really mandatory in that regard. But they, they, they spice up the gameplay a bit. Okay, so... I don't know if we... Yeah, we can get out here. But getting out here is going to be tricky as hell. God damn it. 
I like how the ROM actually slows down too when you lose coins. Because sometimes uh, the Mega Drive would do that. So it's basically a very. Ah, come off it. Now it's just messing with me. It wants, to, it wants me to die. Spooky, spooky skeletons. And we are approaching the second boss. And the second boss is kind of interesting because... Um, oh, come off it. We never got this guy. I mean, we got him later on, of course, when we got more used to the game. But uh, the first times we playing... We did not get this guy. We we could have family playing sessions where we just uh, where we just uh, try and try and we never did it. And the first one to show it that it could be done was my cousin. We brought the Sega to uh, my cousin's place, and he would beat it for us. And we were like, "Oh God, it's uh, so behind." Uh, Marble Zone. We didn't even know how long the game was or knew any of the levels, so... When it comes to levels I dislike, Spring Yard is also up there with... <laughs> I mean, I would probably put it in second place out of all the levels I dislike. Mostly because it basically just makes you feel like you're in a flipper game. And Sonic have always had those kind of levels. And, I mean, from Casino Zone in 2 and stuff like that. Casino Night, I think it's called. Uh, Spring Yard Zone was the first one. And, I don't know why I, don't, I dislike it. But I just do. I don't dislike the music, it's with, just like uh, Marble Zone, the music is actually kind of amazing. Yeah, we actually made it this time. Like I said, basically the music is an instant nostalgia trigger for me. These things are a bit nicer to climb, because uh, it's basically easier to climb them than anything else in here. Whoa! God damn it. Up we go. Up we go. Why am I taking the long way? And there we go. I'm not gonna bother with any more of the bonus areas. I'm just gonna go to jump around here like a maniac. And go to the next one. Oh, I don't I don't know what I did with the with the with the buttons there, but I can basically can do something. I think it's basically I can can I yeah, I can actually wind back the game. No, I'm not gonna use that though, but it's going to be very obvious when I do. Most likely, it's a recovery feature if I want to... For example, if I die and want to avoid that. There are games in the older library that basically really, really can test your patience in that regard. So, I understand that uh, they basically left it in as an anti-frustration device. Of course, my uh, game library for the Steam... for the Steam Mega Drive is awfully small. I really should be expanding it, because as, as I understand, there are quite a few... Uh, quite a few uh, games on the Mega Drive that I never played and that I feel I missed out on. 
Also, this place was so annoying. Because basically you have to get up on that floating platform. That floating platform. The interesting thing is that my family had two Sega Mega Drives. And the first one was balked. I mean... The first one was balked during a day where we did a lot of stuff. We watched Beauty and the Beast, the original uh, Disney version, on cinema. Uh, we went to Pizza Hut. And I felt... Uh, remem I remember... I, fe I felt the pan pizzas tasted weird. I don't know why, but... Uh, and then we got this at Storolita. And... Uh, then it broke. And I really mean broke. So, sometime around the time, 1997 or something like that, uh, we decided we would get another one. And I remember lobbying very, very hard that we would not get a, another Sega Mega Drive. I lobbied so hard that we would get a Nintendo 64. And I mean, I really, really wanted us to have a Nintendo 64. And we never got one. Ah, oh, crap. Uh, instead, we got this one, and I remember my mother, when we bought it at TV Spiel's Bushen. Crap! That's what you get for me being distracted. I remember when we bought it at TV Spiel's Bushen, that my mother asked if uh, there was any games for adults. Uh, and what she meant by that was, was she wanted uh, a game where... Uh, not a platformer, but a game that... Uh, you needed to think a bit more, and was aimed at an older audience. And they recommended Echo the Dolphin. And as far as I can remember, I was the only one who played Echo the Dolphin. Because, hey, it's a dolphin. And, um... I never got far in Echo the Dolphin. I mean, I never got very far in Echo the Dolphin. It, it was... A new, another kind of game entirely, where you really had to think and explore the environment and stuff like that, so... I think I might have gotten to the second level at some point in Echo the Dolphin. But I cannot, for the life of me, remember if we got further than that. I don't think we did. There is a part of me that really wants to try it out sometime. Just get into Echo the Dolphin, see how far I can get. The only problem with doing such a thing with Echo the Dolphin is that dying in Echo the Dolphin during the first levels is actually a hard thing to do. I mean, surviving is not not uh, that problematic. All you need to do to survive in Echo the Dolphin during the first levels is avoid the sharks, at Avoid the jellyfish, and once that is done, all you need to do is uh, remember to go to the surface for air. I, c I don't know if um, in the initial, if the first Echo of the Dolphin, if that was a game where you needed to go to the surface for air and stuff like that, but I do remember the fact. I oh, got damn it. The, the timing on this one is horrible. Uh, but I do remember that. Um, ah, I don't. At any rate, Echo the Dolphin is something we are going to be looking at at some other point. Right now, I am more keen on not dying on the Spring Yard, so. Get down there. Ah, come off it. Ah, 
Off we go. Oh, right. I had actually forgotten that we were already on the third part of Spring Yard. Uh, for some reason, I had mentally checked myself in on the second. So, on this... Ah, crap. I fucked it up. I don't know if I actually got the pre-boss... I don't actually mind that I don't have any rings, because they're not that necessary. Now, as you might, might have noticed here, you basically have to make Robotnik uh, grab one of these. And you don't want to grab him to grab too much at the other end, because if he does, um, you are basically bowed, because you will not be able to get to the next stage. God damn it. Yeah, I do remember us failing hard at this boss as well. And it's not really surprising because out of all the Robotnik encounters in the game, I do consider uh, Spring Yard Zone to have one of the more frustrating ones. So good that good that we managed to uh, rack up a number of lives. And I should really just be careful here. Just be very careful. Let him come to me and don't jump twice unless I feel I can actually get away with it. Come at me, bro. Because jumping twice has been so far the way I've died. And I don't want to. You can get away with just jump jumping once, but you basically need to get those kids in. There we go. One less Robotnik in the world. So, halfway there, we got Labyrinth Zone next, and this is one of my favorites. From the music to the general f just looks of the level to the enemies to the water theme and everything like that, there is nothing wrong at all with Labyrinth Zone. I mean, nothing wrong at all. Unless you count the fact that S Sonic seems to be on the verge of drowning every single moment. But who can blame him? I mean, he's underwater, right? When we was kids, the... It almost sounded like Sonic said Upot, which means up, uh, when he got a breath of fresh air. And that's kind of interesting. I don't know if he what he actually said. Or if there's even any meaning to his words. There we go. Yeah, now he's drowning. So, we'll have to wait by this air bubble to see if there's an air bubble. Yeah, there's one. On the verge of it. And if you get one on the verge of it, you usually want to wait around and try and grab a second one as quickly as possible. Because Sonic is going to run out of air fairly quickly again. There we go. Break the surface. Oh yeah, wrong way. Incoming fire have right of way, and same goes for spikes. Nasty, nasty spikes. Down we go, grabbing one of those. Standing on that one. Ah, crap, the harpoon got me. Oh. God damn it! Fortunately, we were in the right spot, in the right time, so... Let's just jump up on the cork. If you miss that cork, there's not much else you can do. 
do. And uh, the game, this is where the game starts to be a bit unforgiving. Including those brownie balls. I don't really know what to call them, but I don't know why, but I like them. And it's because they're so satisfying to jump at. I mean, they are really satisfying to jump at once they've expended all of their ordnance. But I don't think I can accurately quote Sonic on this. Da 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 like I said, the music of Labyrinth Zone is, has to be one of my favorite ones. If I don't like anything about Labyrinth Zone, it's it's the name. I mean, it's not much of a labyrinth, is it? Die! Like I said, they're very satisfying to jump at. Zone 2 is one of the more confusing layouts. It's not as confusing as Zone 3, and you're gonna most likely going to see exactly what I mean about that. There's also these big tunnels and really big places like this one here where you need to do, do everything right. There we go. As you can see, we now need to find uh, basically a lever. Pull the lever cronk. That movie was a bit behind my time. Now, if I could, I would be able to... Uh, just rewind, but I'm not going to, even though that would be advantageous for my survival. Okay, so somewhere there's going to be a lever that opens that shit, and I need to find it. And it's not in there, because we can't get back there. In fact, I am willingly going to admit that I have no clue where that lever might actually be. But it stands to reason it might be underwater. More to the point, it stands... We're also going to... No, wait, there it was. Just need to get up there and push the button. And I can pretty much assure you that once we've done that, there's going to be a rise of water. Because anything... Either that, or it's not going to stay open for all time. Death to you! No use jumping that- oh, come on. This is unfair. Up we go. Cover! And that's all his ordnance. Let's see how we get up here and what part of this is a trap. Oh yeah, right, it's this fucking thing. We don't have to worry about the air time at this point, at least. Okay, so Labyrinth Zone 3 is where things get nasty. And 
When I say nasty, I mean that things here are going to take a turn for the worst. This is an infinite loop. What you see right now is an infinite, infinite loop. I can sit here for as long as I need to. And we are going to have to break the loop by doing this. You need to find the hole in the wall, you need to open it, and you need to get in there. Once you've done that, you have broken the infinite loop. But until that point, there's basically just an infinite number of water slides for you to ride down. Uh, one thing that actually is uh, a nicer part of that is that um, we don't really have to worry about the boss encounter on this level because the boss encounter on uh, Labyrinth Zone 3 is trivial. Or not really trivial, it's, it's not really a boss encounter as much as it is also here we have, you need to maneuver Sonic away from the spikes by holding on to these things. Now, ah crap, we need to get down to the surface. Yeah, we got it. So we need to find the way to continue here, which is go getting that button. There we go. So we're going to grab a supply of fresh air before we're continuing. Considering the fact that the music just looped there. Uh, I'm playing on PC, uh, but I'm using a controller. I wish I knew how to stream on my on my actual, you know, not really actual Sega Drive because I don't have one. But I have an emulator console that plays the cartridges. Oh, God, no, we need to get the hell off there. Oh, no, 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 fuck. I spotted that one far too late. Ple yeah, thank God we managed to... Okay, now the game's just fucking with me. Let's be very careful about that thing and jump over there. I could really use an extra life right now. Ah, thank god we got that one. And that one. Why Retro Hedgehog? Why not? Because I've been spending most of uh, my time here talking about uh, nostalgic memories about Retro Hedgehog. So. Of course they're gonna play Retro Hedgehog. Thank god we got a shield. Yeah, like I said, the boss encounter on this level is more or less trivial. Uh, you just need to avoid every obstacle in the way, and that's why that shield is pretty nice to have. What makes it worse, however, is the water. And that thing. Because we just wasted our last life. I said my rule would be not to use a continue, but I'm going to, because I've gotten too far to not use a continue. That is uh, the, that is basically the crux of the matter, so yeah, you can basically say that I'm cheating, or not really cheating, but bending my own rules, because I... The thing is, when I got to Labyrinth Zone, it basically feels... Yeah, uh, speaking of breaking the endless loop, for some reason I don't seem to be able to jump properly. If I can't jump properly now... Uh, yeah, like I said, I can rewind. So I'm going to actually... Yeah, there we go. I didn't have to rewind there, but for some reason my jumping didn't work as advertised. So, but that's an infinite loop, so I would be able to jump anyway. 
Uh, so let's just grab all the coins we can and make sure that when we come to the boss we have plenty enough that we can afford to lose them. That's the thing about a continue. If uh, you use a continue, you must uh, restart the level. You don't get to start at the point where you left off. I don't know why, but these sharks cheer me up. I mean, they're basically eternally happy about just being a murdering death machine. Oh yeah, right, now we have to do this all over again. There we go. Oh, come off it. We've already been over this. The thing about the rising water in the boss encounter... Oh, come on. Do not want. You really have a limited air supply. Uh, the problem with the boss encounter is usually your air supply levels. We are, speaking of that, actually closing in on the boss encounter itself. And we're also not going to waste two lives on these corks this time around. But I still want to get ahead a bit. Okay, so here we go again. Let's grab the shield. Hits on Robotnik does not matter at this point in time. Taking our time and making sure we don't hit any of the obstacles or get shot by any of those things, that's going to be vitally more important here. The problem, it really becomes a problem when you notice that, ah crap, god damn it, we did not get any of our coins back and there's not going to be any air supply for us. Oh, wait, here he is. Run, Robotnik, run! So, by the use of a continue, we, we actually managed to, you know, continue onwards to a level that I'm actually a bit mediocre about. And that is because it basically feels... Oh, wait, sorry. Uh, I've actually got ahead of myself. I love Starlight Zone. Uh, Starlight Zone is one of my favorite levels. After Labyrinth Zone is one of my favorite levels. And I don't know how on earth I allowed myself to forget about Starlight Zone. I mean, it's Starlight Zone. How did I forget about it? Mostly because I was so focused on the fact that I thought Scrap Rain Zone was coming up. So, why did I forget about Starlight Zone? Starlight Zone is amazing, even when I die. I need to be more careful. I mean, I get so jovial when I talk about nostalgic game memories and this awesome music and stuff like that, so... Ah, stop! Oh wait, there's a life there. Yeah, there is. We go. We're gonna need to catch that. But that, doing that is easy. We just go roll back and now we can grab it. Okay, so we failed getting up, so that means we go down again. No! Oh. By the skin of our teeth, we managed to get out of that one. Unlike... Unlike... Um, God damn, this is getting annoying. Uh, unlike... Um, no! Fuck! I need to stop talking! I just need to shut the hell up and get this done. 
because they get basically I I get the impression that just because I started making one mistake, I'm going to keep making them. However, the thing is we are almost invulnerable right now because or not really invulnerable, but we can just go back and grab that life again. So they keep appearing, you see. Oh, you green little shit. Stop being in my way. That's rude. Da 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 da. Uh, also, these lava blocks are also a bit annoying because their hitbox. Uh, I'm not gonna blame their hitbox. I'm just gonna say. I can say fuck whenever I like. I can play. I can say fuck when playing a submarine game. And I can say it when I'm playing Sonic. I can especially say fuck playing Sonic because I did when I was young and I thought my mom would not hear me. Sorry mom, but that's the way it was. Because this was more annoying on a console. Because on a console, you basically, you had the cheat code. Uh, but, th I mean, the cheat code was basically word of mouth. So, somebody would tell you, oh, do this combination, and you, you were like, that cannot possibly work. And then you did that combination and found out that, yes, indeed, that combination actually gave you the ability to choose your level. Sonic have passed, Act 1. However, as far as memory serves, I would say that my sister was actually better at Sonic than me. I was. Partially because when I moved on to more advanced games, uh, she would keep playing Sonic. Because we had an emulator on uh, the computer and uh, she would play Sonic, especially Sonic 3. And uh, yeah. Uh, as, when it comes to games like that, there it is a little known fact that an official version of Sonic 3 was actually released on PC. I'm not joking about that. Uh, Sonic 3 and Knuckles was released on, on PC. I know this because we had a PC demo for it and we got it with a gaming ma magazine. Oh right, these things. So, Sonic 3 was not in any way... Oh, How unlucky can you be?! But that is how I was introduced to Sonic 3. So the first time I played Sonic 3, that was on... Oh, come off it. I think, I, I think uh, my brain is numbing off from playing Sonic. Uh, basically, I've been playing this since the start. I don't know how long it's been now. Uh, how long I've been sitting down with this game. Oh god, shrapnel. No, die. But I'm making foolish mistakes. Then again, every mistake I do in Sonic is foolish. Because if my ego is to believe... Uh, I would just graze through this with no loss of life. And we've already established that as woefully false. How you stand doesn't really affect anything else. Oh! We actually finished number two. Nice. So, number three, as far as I remember, had a fairly decent robotic encounter. But considering how many mistakes we made so far, we'll see if we actually made it there. Stop being in the way, you green asshole. And the thing is, I'm trying to keep exploiting the... Um, 
keep exploiting the uh, invulnerability you have a few seconds after you hit something. And I come up short doing it. Oh. Brilliant. You get to detonate and I get to just stand around here. Oh, come on, I was nowhere near that. Sweet coins. Less sweet. Exploding shit. Okay, so I even made a big mistake, or... Why is there a giant thing with spikes in the middle of the level? In fact, I do not want to know. We end up on the right side of the entire thing as well. Light up the bombs, people. Okay, so boss time. This one's easy. You basically just need to either propel you or one of Robotnik's bombs onto Robotnik. Got it. I don't know what thing I'm referring to, but no, I most likely do not have such a thing in my kitchen. At any rate, if you want to do this with style, uh, you basically send Robotnik's own bombs back at him. It's a perfectly viable strategy. Oh, basically my work, sh my work schedule appeared. I'm not even at work today. God damn it. So I'm just going to... Shut that down. There we go. And now we appear at Scrap Brain Zone. No, I don't have a big such thing in my kitchen. Scrap Brain Zone has is once again terrific, awesome music. But each Scrap Brain Zone is different. Um, the first two Scrap Brain Zones are independent, and the last Scrap Brain Zone, as far as I can remember, is based on Labyrinth Zone. Most likely just to piss people off. That, where they were just out of time in making the game. Scrap Brain Zone is also by far the most frustrating platform level ever made. Most likely because it's uh, filled with stuff like uh, these shites. And then you can basically fall down to your horrible, horrible doom. Because I was trying to avoid this part. I don't know why, because uh, considering I've actually become fairly proficient in this part because I've always fallen down. If you time it correctly, you can... Oh, this, this is actually a fun one. You just use the trampolines. Time it right, get a bunch of coins, and hit your head if you're unlucky. Oh no, not this part. Here, here's how it works. Basically, there is a thing up there. Uh, standing on this platform will... You need to be very quick here. Very quick indeed. 
There we go. And back to the frustrating part. We only have one life now. One life to complete the entirety of Scrap Ring, so... Unless we can, uh, can of course, find a life somewhere. We're actually going to go down under this time around in the mechanical solve motion thing. See, this is what happens when I don't have the spooky DLC for Planet Coaster. I start playing nostalgic games instead, and that's the end of the run. I do not have another continue. Still, I am fairly pleased that I got to the end of Labyrinth Zone without actually needing a continue. And I'm also very pleased about the fact that I managed to get to Scrap Brain Zone with a continue. But I was, I mean, my ego basically always focused around me hopefully being able to complete the game without actually, that's not me playing by way, this is the game, this is the, the, the demo save sequence, in case you, you were wondering. Yeah, but basically my ego has been that, yeah, I can complete, uh, Sonic the Hedgehog, but most likely not in a city. And that was the thing I was trying to see if I could actually do or not, so thanks for hanging around, but I think it's time for me to take a walk outside just like it says in the manual.